Hi, this is Pat Moorhead with More Insights and Strategy, and we are here for another 6.5 podcast in the IBM booth here at Mobile World Congress in Barcelona. I'd like to quickly introduce my co-host, Daniel Newman, co-founder of Future Research, but more importantly, our guests, Steve from IBM and Mark from DISH. Gentlemen, how are you? Uh, we're good. It has been a good day, a lot of things happening, so it's fun to see, right? Oh, I know. Can you believe we're back in person? I know we had our masks on walking around here, but we've taken these things off. I can actually see Steve, I can see Mark, see what you guys look like, and I, I, I kind of like this. You know, it's good. It's good to be, and there's a lot of positive energy, and it's not too crowded. It's perfect setup, so yeah. love yeah. that. Yeah, so 5G, big topic. I mean, Mobile World Congress, right? I mean. It was a big topic in 1920. We're really starting to hit kind of that critical mass. It's, it's taking a lot of shape. And one of the shapes that I think it's taking is the industrial view. All the different industries and applications that 5G is powering. I'd love to get the DISH take on you know, the importance and the proliferation of all this and sort of how DISH is thinking about it and how you're taking this to market and, and productizing it. Yeah, I, I, I think you said it. The big difference between 5G and before is that 5G was done for machines. Speed, latency, architecture, I don't want to go into details, but the people that created the standards thought about machines to machines or you know, beyond humans. And uh, we are starting to see that now in terms of consuming 5G, in terms of using it. Um, so at DISH, when uh, we were lucky because we came at a time where we could do a greenfield and we said, we go for enterprise. So when we do consumer, for us it's another enterprise. So the whole network is built you know, nat natively for 5G and enterprises, and yeah, it will take time to get out there, but that, that's really the promise. Yeah, and uh, 5G's been exciting for smartphones the last three years, but really, to get the full value of 5G, you know, we need to get this next release out, and it's exactly what you said, it's the machines. Yeah. It's IoT, where quite frankly, you know, people like you can get low latency, high performance when you want it. Uh, sometimes you might not need all the performance and latency is okay, but people just pay for what they, what they have. Yeah, and, and you know what, what you see here is that a lot of enterprises, healthcare, smart cities, uh, transport, they know what they want. Yeah. But they need to have access to the data, the sensors, uh, the, the vehicles, and they need to get that data and then they know how to manage that data and get a, an application and a service. So our job is to bring the data of their sensors and the machines to them, and then they can invent so many things. And that's, that's what 5G is there for. So Steve, uh, IBM has been part of many of the Gs uh, out there, and here we are in 5G, and uh, not everybody might know what a 5G native network uh, needs and requires, or how you built it, and how maybe that compares to prior networks. Can you? talk to people about this? Well, first of all, it's great to partner and work with DISH. They've been a great client of ours and we're doing some really amazing things. And I think you hit a very important point. DISH has the opportunity to start from scratch, to create a greenfield environment. And they can do that then using the latest, greatest in technology. And so essentially what's happened with network technology, it's become a cloud platform. And that means all of the things we've learned over the years with IT can now be applied into this environment. And one of the key things that we're working with DISH on is automation. If you want to be able to be incredibly fast, take advantage of 5G and the latency and the bandwidth capabilities, one of the things you have to be able to do is to deploy that really seamlessly and really quickly. So the opportunity to work with DISH to show how we can take the most modern automation capabilities and technology and apply it to the network is a really powerful opportunity. And speaking of modern capabilities, one of the big opportunities and discussions around 5G has been around network, sli network slicing. I mean, something that's an opportunity, something that because of its, you know, how robust the network is, enables more and more um, applications, deployment, scale. You use the words, we use them in meetings all the time, but they actually have meaning here, right? So talk a little bit about that. Um, you know, I'd love to hear your take, network slicing and the opportunity it provides. So the thing that is interesting is that for the last 10 years, enterprises have been demanding they have for, for networks. They, they know what they want to do. They want to connect their car, their transport, but we could not, as an industry, offer that because there was no slicing. We were telling them, oh, we can sell you a SIM card. 
that's not what they want. They want to have the feeling they have their network. They want to decide when do they upload the, the data, for what price, between the, the, the maintenance data or, or the, the, the real data that they have on their trucks or whatever. Now with slicing and 5G, we can tell them it's your network. It's your policy, it's your, you manage your SIM card, you manage your access rights, you manage your data, your cost. And they say, well, that's what I wanted, right? So that's the unique offer of, of 5G. And it, and it was very difficult to do it in 4G. Honestly, we can mimic slicing, but it's not real. So yeah, that's going to be different. Yeah, Steve, how about from your point of view, how are you enabling this uh, at IBM? So one way I think about it is, DISH is building a world-class network with connectivity. We've got relationships with compute, with enterprises in all industries. When you put those together, it's a really powerful combination. And slicing, in simple terms, allows us to have full quality of the network dedicated to an application. So whether it's health and, and, the, and the requirement of the network to be there at all times, or manufacturing, or go down the list, the ability to bring this compute plus connectivity together in a way that's guaranteed to provide the quality of service that enterprises require, I think opens up tremendous opportunities for innovation. Yeah, in some ways, analysts sometimes are looking to the future. We're not futurists, we're more like realists, okay? But maybe with a little bit out there, and the way that I like to explain enterprise, the importance of this, and quite frankly, even looking to the future of consumer, is you only pay for what you need. And if you're a carrier, if you're a telco, uh, uh, like Dish is now, awesome, uh, you don't have to put the expenditures in there like uh, having a flat ARPU, like all the other preceding Gs had. You had to have X, you know, $55 ARPU to, to make it a good business and deliver a good service. Sometimes uh, telcos were uh, over-serving the customer, sometimes they were under-serving. But um, what I'm curious though, related network slicing, how do, how do clients know what they need? like the combination of all the different latency, speed, and bandwidth. Yeah, I think uh, you can ask people what they need and offer that, but you can also learn from their use cases. You know, you can learn when do they download that upgrade for their new phone, when do they use video streaming and they don't want to be interrupted. So you can learn and then you can serve that, those patterns and see when they are dropping a call and then you can fix it. So I think it's a mix between offering a service but learning. Right. To the extent that my dream would be that the network disappears. Connectivity, I mean, think of roaming today. You take your phone to another country, it works. You don't even think of it. And I would love to have the same in any kind of use case. You're not worried about the cost. You're not worried about, does it work? You're going into a meeting, video meetings. You're not worried about dropping it, about you know voice quality. That's our mandate, abstract it so that the use case you know, the, is becoming what is important. Right. When we talk about automation, to pick up on Mark's point on learning, we can infuse AI and machine learning right into the processes. So the network becomes smarter every time something happens, and that's what we want. Yeah. We want to learn over time so that we can provide more and more services, and to your point, we'll learn how to optimize those services based on the use cases that we're deploying. Right, and maybe even predict what, what the end customer wants before they even know it. <laughs> yeah, because it's a pattern. You, yeah. you have seen it from other users, and so you, you start learning, right? Yeah. It's always pretty much the same, so you can predict. Yeah, absolutely. You know, I was going to ask them, and you were like reading my mind. So I was going to say, let's talk about automation and AI, and then you talked about it, then you spoke more, and then you finished them off. So you know what I'm going to do is I'm going to finish off the show. <laughs> so Mark, Steve, thank you guys so much for joining. Congratulations on your launch at DISH, and congratulations on the partnership. We appreciate you having us, you, for this 6.5 in the booth. Thank you very much. Thanks, guys. Appreciate it.